Hello everyone, Sober Oni of GD Reviews here, bringing you another event guide. This time we're going to be taking a look at the currently running event in FGONA, Imaginary Scramble. Now, this event is only going to be open to players who've already completed Lost Belt 1, so unfortunately, new players will not be able to participate in this event. However, even if you have completed Lost Belt 1, you should note that this event will contain spoilers all the way up until Lost Belt 4 so you've been warned. With that said though, as usual, this is going to be an in-depth event guide covering everything from the new servants to the best farming strategies. So in order to help you guys along, I've included timestamps in the description down below so you can jump ahead to whichever part of this video you need the most. So if you're excited to take a deep dive into this event, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so you can catch all of my videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now, Let's take a look at those brand new event servants. There won't be any new welfare servants coming with this event, but we do get two brand new 5-star servants appearing in the gacha. First up, we have the 5-star foreigner, Van Gogh. She has a max attack of 11,220 and a max HP of 15,000. Her Noble Phantasm is a powerful party-wide buff that makes her one of the best crit DPSs in the game. And next to her, we have the 5-star Rider, Nemo. He has a max attack of 11,427 and a max HP of 13,680. He has a single target Arts Noble Phantasm and he excels on waterside battlefields. If you'd like a more in-depth analysis of either Van Gogh or Nemo, I do have servant spotlights for them both linked in the description description down below, where I go into much greater detail on their capabilities. But for now, let's take a look at those event CEs. As per usual with these types of events, there are going to be 4 brand new craft essences and 3 new command codes. Starting off with the gacha craft essences first, we have the 3 star Color Me True. This craft essence grants the servant Ignore Evasion and increases their NP gain by 5%. It will also increase technical drops by 1 or 2 if you max limit break it. This can be a useful budget CE for NP spammers like Ushi, Caesar, and Uriel, and it's always just good to have an evasion piercing craft essence lying around for challenge quests. Next up, we have the 4-star Greatest Ocean. This craft essence increases arch card effectiveness by 3%, NP damage by 5%, and increases NP overcharge by 100% one time. It'll also increase Sea Urchin drops by 1 or 2 if you max limit break it, and this is a good one for arts NP loopers, especially since it gives full attack stats, so use it on servants like Ryoma, Da Vinci Lily, and Yang. And finally, the last of the gacha CEs is Mystery Treasure. This CE increases arts and buster card effectiveness by 8%, grants an additional 8% crit damage, and gives 40% starting NP charge. It will also increase tuna drops by 1 or 2 if you max limit break it. And aside from the god tier artwork, this craft essence can also be useful on any kind of arts and buster crit servants like Emia, David, or Gil. The free shop CE for this event is the 5 star Like a Bird. This craft essence increases crit damage by 10%, increases buster crit damage by an additional 15%, and grants 3 crit stars each turn. In addition, for the duration of this event, it will also increase the damage of the equipped servant by 100% or 200% if you max limit break it, and this is actually one of the best craft essences we've ever gotten for free from an event. It's an excellent CE for any kind of buster crit servant like Himiko, Super Orion, or Mori, so I do highly recommend farming for it so that you can max limit break it. Moving on to the command codes, we have the 3 star Leviathan. This cute command code grants 100 HP when attacking with the engraved card, and it also generates 1 crit star. This can be a nice crit star generating command code for tanks like Mosh and Jean. For the 4 star command code, we have Pestle of the Kleshas. This command code increases crit damage by 10% on the engraved card and ignores defense. And this one is just generally good on any kind of crit servant like Himiko or Caesar. And finally, we have the 5 star Heavenly Emperor's Consort. And this command code is pretty much custom built for Yang, if you couldn't tell by the art, because it increases crit damage against burn enemies by 30%. The event shop for this event is also pretty straightforward. There are going to be three different types of currencies, the tentacles, the sea urchins, and the tuna bellies. You can trade in tentacles for one copy of the event CE, a code remover, ancient gears, rainbow yarn, stakes, chains of a foolish god, and three star and four star experience, and foes. The Sea Urchin will trade in for another copy of Like a Bird, another Command Code Remover, Lunugos, Spiritrons, Void Dust, and Lancer, Rider, and Assassin Pieces, while the Tuna Belly will trade in for two copies of the CE, another Command Code Remover, Spirit Roots, Black Tallow, Plumes, and Lancer, Rider, and Assassin Monuments. As you can see, there's only going to be four copies of the event CE that you can buy from the shop, so if you do want to max limit break it, then you'll need to get lucky and farm for the fifth copy. And again, 
again, this is one of the event CEs that I strongly recommend farming for because it's just that good. Imaginary Scramble is a very large and very unique event with a different gimmick than most other events that we've had so far. Essentially, this entire event is going to revolve around exploring an unknown area and revealing bits of the map to progress. Sort of like the Tokugawa Labyrinth event, aka the Kama event, but a little bit more complex. You'll navigate the seafloor in a submarine and you'll need to use your sonar to uncover portions of the map. In order to reveal the map with your sonar though, it's going to cost you exploration material. Materials. Exploration materials are separate from shop currencies, but they drop from every free quest, so you can farm them exactly the same way you would farm any other shop currency. The exploration materials are going to be dazzling fish scales, dazzling fins, and dazzling razor teeth. And as you progress through the event, you're also going to unlock different types of sonars that can scan wider or more narrow areas of the map. And they will all have different exploration material cost, so that you'll need to make sure that you're using your map scanning efficiently. After using your sonar to scan portions of the map, you'll reveal treasure chests and exploration quests. Chests will reward you with exploration points, exploration materials, and even ascension mats. While entering an exploration quest, will pit you against a group of enemies or an area boss. Defeating these bosses or enemies will also reward you with exploration points and allow you to progress to new areas. Exploration points, in addition to unlocking new areas and main story, quests will also contribute to a point ladder which will reward you with QP and mana prisms for reaching certain milestones. And at 290,000 exploration points you'll even get a crystal lore. So in short, collect exploration materials from free quests, use those materials to activate the sonar and reveal portions of the map for chests and battles, and then beat those battles and collect all the treasure on the map so that you can earn exploration points and progress. And speaking of progression, unlike with most events, the main story quests for Imaginary Scramble are not easy. Since the game expects you to have beaten Lost Belt 1 to participate in the event, the difficulty is on par with what you'd see from a Lost Belt chapter, as is the writing. There is a ton of cutscenes and dialogue, so it's best to think of this as a mini Lost Belt rather than an event. To help you with these tough fights though, you can bring special story supports to battle like Nemo and Raiko. These story supports all have unique special abilities for this event that can do things like buffing the entire party's arts damage, giving the entire party evasion, or even weaken enemies, so it's worth bringing them along if you're struggling in some fights. It does cost exploration mats to bring them into a fight however, so only use them when necessary since you don't really want to be burning any resources. And as an important note, it's crucial to pay attention to the enemy bosses in exploration battles. Many of them will have unique buffs and gimmicks that you need to counter using specific story support. For example, there's one boss who's literally unkillable unless you bring a specific ally who has the ability to remove his unkillable buff. Every story support has the ability to dispel a specific buff from an enemy, so if you run into a boss that you don't know how to kill, it's likely that you will need to bring one of the supports that counters them. You won't just be able to speedrun through this event right away though. As I mentioned earlier, main quest progression is locked behind exploration points, so if you're not seeing main story chapters appear, chances are that you need to explore the map more and get more exploration points to unlock it. In addition to the exploration though, the main story of the event is also time locked. It'll take about a week before all the quests open up, and that includes free quests as well. So make sure that you take your time and just enjoy the event, no need to rush. Now let's talk about the most important part of any event, the farming. There's a number of strategies that you can employ that are going to make farming this event much easier. First, let's take a look at the event bonus servants. There's going to be a lot of them and they're split into two different groups. The first group of bonus servants are going to be the ones who have a damage bonus for this event and those are going to be the ones on screen right now. As I mentioned, this event is going to be pretty difficult for most players, so if you have any of these servants, I do recommend using them for story quests and exploration battles since it'll just make your life that much easier. It's also worth keeping these servants in mind for the challenge quest. But the second set of bonus servants are going to be the ones who help you out with farming. And these servants are going to be the ones that increase the drop rates of your exploration materials. So if you have any of these servants, you should stick them in the back of your party just to increase the drop rates for exploration materials while you're progressing through 
through the event. As for farming shop currencies, that's what the CEs are for. The gacha CEs are going to increase the drop rates of the shop currencies. Color Me True will increase the tentacle drop rates, Greatest Ocean will increase the sea urchin drop rates, and Mystery Treasure will increase the tuna drop rates. But in addition to that, the Like a Bird CE as well as Imaginary Around and Imaginary Element will grant bonus attack damage to every servant for this event. Generally speaking, when you start this event, I recommend rolling the friend point gacha to see if you can pick up that 3 star craft essence and make farming a little bit easier. But you're going to want to purchase the Like a Bird CE from the shop as soon as possible, and if you get lucky and get an extra drop, then make sure you max limit break it ASAP. The extra bonus damage it gives is going to make this event much, much easier. Also, keep in mind that not all free quests are going to be available right away, and the best farming nodes won't appear for the first couple of days of the event. So don't go crazy with your farming right away, just focus on story and exploration for the first few days. But once all of the nodes do open up, then the optimal free quests to farm for each item are going to be the Battleship for Tentacles, Dreadnought for Sea Urchins, and Super Dreadnought for Two. And those three nodes will also drop the highest amount of exploration mats as well. If those free quests are too difficult for you, then you can also farm the Gunboat, Destroyer, and Light Cruiser stages for Tentacles, Sea Urchins, and Tuna, respectively. Those nodes are much easier, but they drop less of the currency. And that's all I have to say about the Imaginary Scramble event. This is going to be a tough one, so I hope you guys are ready. Also, I know I usually include a challenge quest guide section in these videos, but I think I'm going to start making those videos separate just so I can go into more detail, so be on the lookout for that. And if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't feel too shy to stop on by a stream. I am back to streaming on YouTube now, as well as Twitch, so if you see me live, do feel free to stop on in and say hello. Also, if you haven't already, do follow us on Twitter, join the party on our Discord, and follow us on Twitch, all linked in the description down below. And until next time, this has been Sober Oni, signing out. Later.